So welcome to the integration track. And uh, the, as uh, she mentioned, the main purpose of this track will be uh, to address uh, how WS2 platform caters your enterprise integration needs. So, so uh, in this particular session, I would like to give a brief introduction to the WS2 integration platform. Uh, I'll talk a bit about uh, how each and every product can be used to solve uh, your enterprise integration needs. And uh, I'll mainly focus on ESP and uh, some of the new innovations related to the enterprise, enterprise integration space. Especially, I'll talk, talk a bit about the new uh, WSO Gateway product. So let's get started. Uh, so as you know, our main objective of our entire integration platform or entire WSL platform is, you, is to help you to build a connected world or connected business. So in that regard, building an integrated business or integrating whatever the devices, systems, and applications that you have your, in your enterprise is a key aspect. So when it comes to integrating your existing systems and services, uh, you probably have came across this kind of an architecture. So maybe you have learned this as an anti-pattern of enterprise integration, or this may be very similar to the enterprise integration architecture that you are working with. So, uh, so actually, uh, it is not really intentional to build an architecture or a system uh, like this from the scratch. Because you might start with a couple of systems, like uh, one or two services and uh, systems, and you will have point-to-point -point connectivity between those systems. But gradually, with the time, with the new requirement, you will end up having this kind of a spaghetti point-to-point uh, -point architecture. So the purpose of using an integration platform is to get rid of uh, this kind of a mess, and uh, rather building a much more manageable uh, enterprise integration architecture. So this is a quick, uh, this is a very high level overview of WS2 integration platform. Uh, so I, I selected some of the main products from the platform and also uh, several uh, systems, disparate systems. To start with, there will be some uh, legacy systems like proprietary systems, SAP system, and some web services, file-based uh, something like a file server, and also some, of your bis some part of your business may be residing in the cloud, like cloud services such as Salesforce. So, and also there will be data residing in your enterprise, a lot of databases, different types of uh, disparate data sources, and uh, maybe some MQ products where you need uh, persistent messaging or guaranteed messaging. So with the WSO2 platform, you can use uh, WSO2 ESB to connect these disparate uh, protocols and systems. So that is acting as the centralized integration bus. And at the same time, if you have any cloud connectivity, again, we have required cloud connectors to connect to the cloud-based uh, applications. And, and for the data residing in your enterprise, you can use data service to expose a service layer on top of your uh, data sources and to address the guaranteed message delivery requirements you can use uh, WS2 message broker and uh, different types of business processes and stateful service uh, orchestration is facilitated with the business process server so i'll go into the details of uh, most of these products and there will be separate talks on uh, message broker and process center related technologies as well. OK. So let's start with uh, WS2 ESB. I think some of, you are, some of you may be already using WS2 ESB, but to give an introduction, it's a lightweight, high-performance enterprise service bus. And uh, it offers comprehensive support for REST, uh, SOAP, and uh, WS uh, STAR protocols, standards. And uh, it offers different kind of uh, business-specific adapters for SAP, FIX, and HL7. And it is completely uh, zero code, and it is completely configuration-driven. Do you don't really have to write any code to get uh, things integrated. And it, 
uh, although it is configuration driven, if you have any custom requirements, there are a lot of extension points that you can leverage. And uh, it is offering 100% coverage of enterprise integration patterns. And uh, each and every enterprise integration pattern can be implemented with W3 ESB. And if you go to the documentation site, you can see uh, samples for each and every uh, EIP. So when it comes to hybrid integration, which means cloud to cloud and cloud to on-premise integration, we offer uh, cloud connectors or ESB connectors. We, uh, at the moment with the 4.9 release, we release 100 plus cloud connectors to connect to different uh, web APIs, cloud APIs. And also, at the same time, we are working on a, a new integration cloud, which offers ESB as a service capability, along with uh, different integration templates, uh, capability to connect different uh, cloud connectors. So when it comes to WSO2 ESP, performance is a key highlight. Uh, from the very first day, performance is a main concern, and we always try to improve performance. And based on regular performance tests, our routine, based on our routine performance testing, uh, at the moment it, it, is, it turns out to be the fastest open source ESB compared to several other open source ESP vendors. And, uh, and also it is battle tested for extreme conditions, uh, especially with the case studies like uh, uh, several case studies for handling billions of transactions uh, on uh, tra various trading systems. So we, we regularly doing performance tests, and each and every release uh, must go through a performance test, and uh, uh, the performance must be either equal or higher than the previous release. So we, we released the ESP 4.9 version in last September. And uh, there are quite a lot of uh, new changes that we have introduced along with this particular release. Uh, so when it comes to inbound messaging, uh, when you are receiving messages from external systems, we introduce something known as uh, inbound transports or inbound endpoints, where you can dynamically create uh, messaging channels. It is like uh, you can create HTTP interfaces dynamically to receive messages from external sources or you can create something like JMS or VFS-based uh, message, uh, messaging channels. And uh, one of the key limitations in previous releases is the, especially four point, uh, releases before 4.9 are the uh, coordination support and uh, coordination, uh, coordination support for message receiving. So when it co comes to task coordination, uh, assume that you are running multiple, uh, you are running a scheduled task, a scheduled job on a given ESP node, uh, you need to have coordination between all the cluster nodes. So for instance, the ESP task should be executed on a given cluster node. And in case that particular node goes down, there should be a new task running on a new node, newly elected node. So we offer coordination support for task. And when it comes to JMS and VFS, again, you need the same functionality because you might have to process messages in a given order, the ordered messaging. So there should be only single consumer running in a cluster. And if that particular consumer goes down, there should be a new uh, consumer started automatically. So that is, that is what supported from the coordination in ESP 4.9. And uh, with this particular release, we introduce a new messaging, uh, message flow design. So if you are already using ESB, you may be familiar with the uh, in and out sequence model, where you have in sequence for processing request and out sequence for processing responses. But with this particular release, we promote this kind of a message processing model, where you receive messages from a client, and there will be multiple message entry points. Uh, proxy services are there to receive messages uh, from, an, uh, from a SOAP interface. All the RESTful or HTTP-related messages uh, can, be, uh, can come through an HTTP service or an API. And uh, the inbound endpoint concept that I just described 
uh, this can dynamically configure all the in inbound messaging. So from this message entry point, it go message goes to a sequence which comprises of several message processing units known as uh, mediators. So if you get the message from one of these entry points, you can do all the transformation, uh, all the content-based routing logic, and then you can send the message to the backend service through an, with the use of a mediator known as call. And you can immediately pro start processing the response from the same sequence, unlike the previous model where you have to process the uh, responses in the out sequence. So you can stick to single sequence, and when you are, once you are done with the message processing, you can just use the respond and send back the resp uh, response back to the client. So this drastically reduces the complexity of message processing. And uh, when it comes to service orchestration scenarios, like lightweight service orchestration, uh, this will drastically simplify your configuration. And uh, with the 4.9 release, we uh, enhance our MQ support uh, with the capability of integrating with uh, Kafka, MQTT, and RabbitMQ. Uh, you can receive messages from these brokers as well as produce messages to the to these brokers. And uh, we introduce a new mediator known as For Each, which is capable of doing uh, generic loops, writing generic loops inside your mediation logic. And this particular release contains nearly 800 bug fixes. And that's a quite a lot of uh, stability work uh, that are taken place, that is taken place in this particular release. So I would like to talk a bit about 4.10, uh, which is due to release in early 2016. Uh, so the, one of the main highlights in this particular release is the user exp uh, developer experience. Uh, along with our developer tool, which is WS2 Developer Studio, we are introducing a new mediation debugger. So this is a screenshot of the ongoing development. So where you can, uh, you can uh, debug your message mediation logic. You can put a breakpoint and uh, look at all the message content and, uh, and also different properties, different attribute of the message. There are a lot of customers who are interested about uh, having a de debugging capability in the tool, so this will uh, satisfy all those needs. And uh, along with that, we have uh, several other capabilities, such as uh, message tracing support. Uh, that means you can enable message tracing for a given business unit like a uh, service, and you can trace through the entire message flow. And, and also, we, are, we have revamped the mass mediation statistics uh, so to give a much more business-oriented uh, mediation statistics, such as what is the complex uh, sequence, what is the most expensive sequence that you have in your message processing logic, and what is the slowest endpoint uh, that you are sending messages to. And also, we are adding the WebSocket support. So again, WebSocket is getting quite popular, and uh, ESP can act as a WebSocket receiver, or it can produce messages to a WebSocket endpoint. And, uh, and also, we are adding support for JMS 2.0 specification along with this release. <coughs> so. That's about the ESP, and I like to talk a bit about uh, the other products in the integration space. So this is about WS2 Data Services Server. So the primary pr purpose of WS2 Data Services Server is to provide a service uh, interface. So this can be a RESTful or SOAP interface to disparate data sources. So there can be multiple databases, different types of databases. Uh, can be SQL or NoSQL databases, as well as different data sources such as Excel or CSVs. So you can you can use the uh, XML-based DSL of data services server and expose a RESTful or SOAP interface on top of these uh, disparate data sources. So the key advantage is you don't really have to worry about the actual implementation of the data, and if you change this uh, data representation, you don't really have to worry about the uh, the consumers of this particular interface, because that is, uh, so they are talking to an interface, but the implementation can be changed. So data services server, again, is heavily used in most of our 
customers enterprise integration scenarios. Okay, so the next product is WS2 Business Process Server. So one of the key, uh, so the, the, when it comes to integration scenarios, there can be scenarios that you send a request and you re immediately receive the response. But there can be business processes that you send the request, but you'll get the response maybe tomorrow or a couple of days later. So those are long-running processes. So when it, things such as loan uh, approval processes, so those things are long-running processes. And also there can be business processes that need some human interaction. You send a request and somebody, some person needs to approve that request. So, that, so for that kind of scenarios, you need to use a separate product, which is WS2 Business Process Server. And these requirements are not addressed along with the ESB. So with the BPS, uh, we support, uh, you can define b uh, business processes using WSBPL or BPMN, and also it supports human interaction uh, capability for workflows using human task and uh, BPMN user task. So it also comes with different support for uh, data manipulation and also comes with a tooling uh, capability with a gra graphical process modeling with uh, WS2 Developer Studio. So if you have to select uh, ESB or BPS for a given scenario, the key uh, points that you have to take into the consideration is uh, whether your business process is a long-running or a stateful thing, or if that requires uh, human interaction, then you have to go for BPS. But if, if your process is uh, uh, stateless, li uh, stateless and short-running, then you can uh, f uh, realize that requirement with Enterprise Service Bus. So this is about message broker, WS2 MB. So this is a multi-protocol uh, distributed uh, message broker which supports uh, lightweight and leaner deployment pattern. And also it performs uh, quite faster than most of the existing message brokers. So there will be a separate talk on message broker in, in the same track. And uh, the key messaging models supported are queues, topics, and uh, different protocol support is there in the MB, S things like JMS, MQP, and MQTT. The key, f the key purpose of using message broker in your enterprise is to have guaranteed message delivery. So there can be a source and a target system, and you need to make sure message from source is uh, delivered to the target system, and you need to ensure that uh, message delivery is guaranteed. So that's where you have to use message broker. So, so far we talked about uh, message uh, level, message oriented uh, disparate systems, but when it comes to identity, you have to deal with disparate identity management systems as well. So that's where WS2 Identity Server can act as the identity bus to federate identity among disparate identity management systems. So WS2 Identity Server can, can be used to integrate different types of identity management systems using, again, using a configuration-driven approach. OK, so this is about the API management and integration. So because uh, these things are very often discussed when, when we you should use uh, API management and when we should uh, go for an integration solution. So the thing is, you, you have to, so as the first thing, uh, you have to integrate whatever the systems that you're having in your enterprise and create different business functionalities. So in order to come up with a new business functionality to expose that functionality to the customer, you have to integrate the existing systems. And once you create the functionality, then it's a matter of exposing that to your client. So that's where the API management layer comes into play. So, so with the integration layer, you do all the integration aspects. And once those business functionalities are implemented, they can be exposed using the API management layer. So we always recommend to have this kind of a layered approach because 
you can independently scale these two layers because in, in some scenarios you may have uh, quite a complex integration requirements. Uh, in that case you can uh, independently scale this layer without worrying about uh, scaling the API management layer. So this is known as the API facade pattern where you, you, your integration uh, layer may be exposing some complex, complex functionality but from the API layer you can make sure that uh, business functionality is exposed as a simple API to your customers. Okay, so I would like to talk a bit about uh, next generation integration platform. Uh, you may have heard of this new product, uh, WS2 Gateway. So, so the main purpose of building this new product is to uh, revamp uh, all our existing technologies, uh, existing architectures, and the uh, WS2 Gateway is is an ultra high performance, lightweight, and reusable message gateway, and uh, it can encapsulate messaging between source and target systems. So we have seen this as a common pattern in most of the most of the products in our platform. If you take the API gateway, ESB, load balancer, app manager, so this is a very common requirement that uh, that we need to en encapsulate the messaging be between source and target systems. So as the first release, this is a HTTP message gateway leveraging Netty and LMAX disruptor architecture along with the WSO2's uh, pass-through messaging architecture. So owing to these concepts, uh, or owing to these architectures, we managed to get uh, much more performant, uh, much high performant uh, runtime compared to the existing ESP. So one of the key aspects of this architecture is to fully decoupling protocol handling and message processing. So if you take the current ESP, there will be uh, message uh, protocol handling done by transports and message processing uh, will be done by the mediation logic. So with this new architecture, we fully decoupled the message processing engine from uh, protocol handling. And we implemented protocol handling using Netty and uh, LMAX architecture. And uh, mediation uh, message processing engine is pluggable. You can plug in your own message processing engine. So we are planning to, so the first release is going with Camel as the message processing engine. But uh, when it comes to the realization of this as uh, separate products, we may be using different implementation of the uh, message processing engine. So we are changing this part while keeping the consumer side uh, fixed. So along with that, we, are, we have plans to release several other products, like API Manager will be based on the new gateway. And also in, a, uh, in the future releases, like uh, next generation ESB will be based on this architecture. And also we have plans to build a new file gateway based on the same architecture in order to cater your file-based integration needs. So this is a quick overview about the features available in the current gateway. Uh, we have ultra high performance and low latency HTTP messaging and it supports thousands of concurrent connections uh, and also at the moment it supports header based routing and it has the capability of uh, defining REST APIs. So I think this will be the most interesting part. This is a performance comparison that we have done with uh, existing uh, WSO2 ESB transport, WSO2 ESB runtime, and the new uh, gateway product. So the, the top one, top graph is about the direct backend. When you hit the backend service directly, this is the TPS that you get. And when you hit the, hit the gateway uh, directly, this is the TPS that you get. So you, you can see it is following almost the same pattern as the backend service, and uh, this probably represent the latency. And if you compare that with the existing ESP's transport, it is pretty much like 10 times faster than existing uh, WSO2 ESP transport. And also we compare with the Camel's native Netty implementation. Again, it is nearly three times faster than the Camel's uh, native Netty implementation. And uh, we have compared the latency Latencies again, uh, so this is the pass-through transport, which is the default transport of WSDSP 4.9, uh, 
and this is the uh, gate phase latency. So you can obviously see a uh, lot of improvements related to the throughput as well as the latency. OK, so finally, uh, I would like to, to give a bit of an insight about uh, the future of integration, uh, because this microservice architecture is getting very popular, and people start. There are a lot of conf confusions and a lot of discussions related to microservices. Uh, the, is that the date of the ESB, or what will happen to the integration platforms, etc. So microservices architecture itself says uh, smart endpoints and dump pipes. That means you don't have any service orchestration engine in between the services. But when it comes to the realization of microservices, but in the real world I enterprises, you will have to deal with disparate systems. Uh, disparate protocols, and some part of your business may be residing in the cloud. And also, you may have to do complex message processing requirements, complex message routing requirements. At the same time, you may have some business processes which are long running, which need some human interaction. So, most of the message, uh, most of the integration requirements needs to be addressed. And uh, what what is the best approach is to handle uh, the, the the best approach is to handle this kind of a, a disparate requirement is to use the hybrid approach of the microservices and enterprise integration platform. So you can selectively identify what part of business that you should have microservices, and what parts needs the needs an enterprise integration platform. So you can use the hybrid of those, th those two things, and you can get the best of uh, both worlds. OK, so with that, I would like to conclude my session. Uh